Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, just wanted to take the time to let you know that I said I was going to take care of the FOIA request by the end of the week. I decided to take care of that now before I get to editing and amending certain documents that we've been working on. And that's going to be my day for the rest of the day. But I want to share the information I just put together. Now, I just sent it to FOIA-appeals at frb.gov. That's where it went because they told me I had 90 days to appeal this junk. And so I decided, okay, I was going to do my administrative appeals. Now, if I'm doing an administrative appeal, I could do the subpoena thing administratively because it's an administrative appeal under the Administrative Procedures Act, but I'm not going to go through all of that. However, those of you who have written to these individuals, appeal whatever decision. See, she, I'm treating your appeal as a reconsideration of that determination. I didn't ask her for that. I didn't tell her what she got to do. I didn't tell her she got to treat my stuff however, whichever way she wanted. So let me tell you what Ms. Fennell, 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 the attorney at law, my response to her, this is a communication to the Federal Reserve Board of, Board of Governors, but it says Board of Governors. Now, I, I did not proofread this because I didn't feel like it. All right, just that simple. Too tired, I tell you. This communication is specific and directly associated with 59 Stat 237, subsection 2 of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act, subsection 1 and 2, November 7, 2022. I wrote a FOIA request via the website of the Federal Reserve Board, and due to the limitations, could not due to limitations could not be as detailed as one would like. My question to the Federal Reserve was simple, but or simple but specific, and that was, since the President of the United States by a presidential proclamation, as amended, identified anyone engaged in any other form of banking business during this ongoing banking holiday as banking institutions. March 9, 1933 Act as amend, amends the following. Section 403, Section 13 of the Federal Reserve Act is amended as amended, is amended by adding to the end thereof the following new paragraph, subject to the limitations, restrictions, and regulations as the Federal Reserve Board may prescribe. Means they have to have regulations. Any Federal Reserve Bank, any Federal Reserve Bank may make advances to any individual partnership corporation on the promissory notes of such individual. Okay. The Federal Reserve Act, as amended, to the present day documents the following. Section 16, the Federal Reserve notes to be issued at the discretion of the Federal Reserve Board of the Federal Reserve System for the purpose of making advances to Federal Reserve banks through the Federal Reserve agents as hereinafter set forth and for no other purpose are they authorized. The said notes shall be obligation of the United States and shall be receivable by all national member and Federal Reserve banks for all taxes, customs, and other public dues. Well, you know what a public due is? My necessities. I'm a member of the public. I got some dues to take care of. Don't you dare. Do's and don'ts, don't you dare. And they shall be redeemed in lawful money on demand at the Treasury Department of the United States. In the city of Washington, District of Columbia, or in any Federal Reserve Bank, ladies and gentlemen, my promissory note should have been redeemed. Why? Because it's in exchange for Federal Reserve notes. Shh. We're not there yet. Not talking about that in this video. Section number two, which is 412. Any Federal Reserve Bank may make applications to the local Federal Reserve agent for such an amount of Federal Reserve notes here and, now, here and before provided for as it may require. As it may re I, I require. You know what I mean? Such application shall be accompanied with a tender to the local Federal Reserve agent of collateral in amount equal to the sum of the Federal Reserve note that's applied for and issued pursuant to such application. The collateral security thus offered shall be notes, drafts, and bills of exchange. We can skip the rest of this because this ain't the subject of the conversation. I just included it. And I said, amended through public law, blah, 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 if enacted May 24, 2018. I gave them the current statute. Don't want to hear it. 
Don't tell me that this doesn't exist. Tell me that they removed it back in 2008. 5-5-14-1-0-4-7-6. Don't care about all that stupid stuff. According to the aforementioned evidence, of what the law is, i.e. the congressional record documenting the intent of Congress, the statute at large, and the Federal Reserve Act, as well as Presidential Proclamation 2039, each as amended to the present day, holds that any individual may receive advancements from the Federal Reserve Bank based on promissory notes of such individuals. And the Federal Reserve Act identifies any individual as any Federal Reserve Bank, as proved by a review of the record and codified at Title 12, Section 221, under the phrase, any bank, and any Federal Reserve Bank may make application to the local Federal Reserve agent upon such amount for, uh, for such an amount of Federal Reserve notes as here and before provided, and as it may require, such application shall be accompanied with the tender of collateral, the collateral security thus offered shall be notes. Equal protection of law and equal access to law provides that I and others, that includes y'all, have the unimpeded, uh, are to have an unimpeded access to the privileges associated with the aforementioned laws. Because the act specifically documents the following, subject to such limitations, restrictions, and regulations that the Federal Reserve Board may prescribe, your staff has supposed to be, has indicated that there is no responsive records or documentation or evidence or of any procedure and or regulations associated with the aforementioned. That is disappointing since the act documents procedures and that the Federal Reserve Board were prescribed to prescribe such procedural regulations. President Truman dealt with the issue of attempting to regulate individual banking institutions or individual private banks. And since the United States Treasury under the act was given certain authority which appears to violate the Takings Clause, the other gives supreme authority to the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States to impound all of the gold of the United States in the hands of individuals. And I tell them where we get the excerpts from all of the aforementioned. The government apparently could not take the gold from the people and not compensate them in the following fashion. How did the government purport to compensate you and me? Under the new law, the money is issued to the banks in return for government obligations, bill of exchange, bankers' acceptance, draft, trade acceptances. The money shall be worth 100 cents of the dollar because it's backed by the credit of the nation. It will represent a mortgage on all the homes and all the other property of the people in the nation. And we have provided that any direct obligation in the United States or any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptance acquired by the Federal Reserve banks may be deposited with the Treasury of the United States or with the Federal Reserve agents. And upon these securities, Federal Reserve Bank notes may be issued. In case of deposits of obligations of the government, the issuance of Federal Reserve Bank notes may be for the entire amount of such securities. <clears throat> Sorry, got to clear my throat. You guys are going to see how I cover the Federal Reserve Bank notes in a second. Got to undo that. Your representative was correct. And we're going to go, let's do the hand so that we're, I don't want to deal with the box moving. So I got to, yeah, because I did it in boxes. Oh, mama, he put it in boxes. I mean, like he moving or something. Oh, my stars. Okay, we can do that. That now the box won't move. Your representative was correct. In 1945, the United States Congress amended the act to terminate the issuance of circulating notes, otherwise known as Federal Reserve Bank notes, in exchange for Federal Reserve notes, for the making of advancements to individuals known as banking institutions and or any individuals and or any Federal Reserve Bank. Under the principles of statutory interpretation, the term word any is a negative determiner, meaning that it has a nonspecific general application as opposed to a positive determiner such as the and or a just to give a few examples and refers to any banking institution engaged in banking business as prescribed in law however she your representative was not specific as to my request in fact took several points out of context and i must raise an objection to such a practice i am a citizen of the United States of America. 
as identified by the Civil Rights Act of 1866. I can say that because it's not a 14th Amendment citizen. It is the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which was before the 14th Amendment. So I was classified prior to that 14th Amendment. And I'm going to grandfather myself in under the Civil Rights Act. Anybody got a problem with that? I don't care. It's my business. This is my letter. Stay out of my business. And as such, I do believe that your organization is interfering with my right to access government and that you are doing it under color and or authority of law in violation of the aforementioned directives as enacted by Congress. The McDade Amendment, look it up, requires you to follow your procedures, which is the Federal Reserve Act. I have presented you with a specific procedure that I am seeking to have applied to my circumstances, or perhaps you can inform me of the best way to accomplish what I seek to accomplish. What is that? Now, this is where I tell them what I want. I have attained the age of the majority. I'm competent to control the securities held in my minor account. I have been denied access to these securities upon attaining the age of the majority due to the vagueness of procedures as noted above. And this vagueness and circumstance has led to the inability of accessing my property in violation of the right to property clause and other associated secured rights. I do not have a home. And per law, I am permitted to have at least one home, at least one modern automobile, at least one dog, and other necessities of life. I am looking to achieve this in exchange for the gold portion that was taken by government in exchange for the aforementioned. Because of my physical disability and health needs, I will require a facility to accommodate those needs, plus an annual salary and or station. Give me one second. And or cost of living of one million adjusted for inflation. And this is annually. See, annually. I have already sent the United States Treasury Department a bill of exchange promissory note for $10 million on or about February 2nd, 2022. And it appears that they were to have forwarded this instrument to your offices. If you need a reproduction of the instrument, please inform and advise my person of such. However, the law only permits 90 days for such an offset to occur and the Federal Reserve notes to be received. I have yet, after eight months, been of being patient to receive what is mandated by law. Please provide the Pacific procedures. I said Pacific, not specific, Pacific procedures. And due to physical limitations, I do hereby give this agency the authority to complete any and all necessary documentation for accomplishing the aforementioned in accordance with the aforementioned law and act supported by the intent of Congress and the seizure of my property. Okay? i.e. supreme authority of the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States to impound all the gold of the United States in the hand of individuals. You didn't have the authority to seize my property. Now, guess what happened when they seized my property? You seized my property, my family inheritance, thus leaving my person destitute without a means to adequately care for my person, my necessities, my maintenance, and my education. The age of the majority act says that a person such as myself is entitled to the aforementioned and seems how via this act, it is clearly documented that I am of competent age and that I am the owner of the certificate of live birth that has been filed on the record, that I am capable as has been proved for the last 54 years of managing my own affairs. It is time that others move out of the way so that I may pursue happiness in and with peace of mind. So in peace of mind and with peace of mind. Okay, shoot. Thank you for the receipt of this communication, for your receipt of this communication, for receiving the communication. Attached is the communication received by Mrs. Michelle Tyler, uh, Taylor Fennell, attorney at law, which documents your organization's failure to comply with the Freedom of Information Act, which you are required by law to do by law. You document the Freedom of Information Act on your website and you are, you've indicated that you are required to follow the Freedom of Information Act. Because, excuse me, that's supposed to be Act. So that's five mistakes in your communication from the aforementioned representative. 
The subject matter of this communication is presented above. Please receive this communication contextually. You are not permitted to construe what my intentions are and or to assume and or to presume what is meant. As this communication is to be read contextually and not otherwise, Ms. Fennell took liberties not to, not extend it to her by presuming that she could determine what was, what I was seeking. What, uh, it's supposed to be by nitpicking. Number six, and or getting overly technical and failing to deal with the substance of the communication. However, she did document to her injury and mine that no such records were to be found, which is an impossibility since I provided you a basis for the United States Congress mandating that such records are to exist. Staff search board records but did not locate any documents responsive to your request. Therefore, we are unable to provide you with any information. If you believe the determination that no records exist is incorrect. Okay. I just need access to the process so that I can achieve what is stated herein. As it appears that there was responsive information and or records directly associated with the Federal Reserve Act, which is directly associated with this organization and its policies and procedures. Also to note that Mrs. Fennell acknowledges the appeal, but then claims that she was construing it as a reconsideration because she claims new information was introduced when there was no new information introduced. No one has ever dealt with the substance and that is what was indicated above, which was explained in the communications previously, which have not been responded to in accordance with the law. Those communications are summarized in the above. There is no additional information here other than my explaining what my attempts are with reference to my intentions. Please state within the, or it's supposed to be state, number seven, stay within the scope of the inquiry and do not, as Ms. Fennell did, assume it reasonable to tell me what I am thinking or what I mean when I am fully capable as a competent adult and age of the majority member of doing so myself. I can tell you what I mean. I don't need you to tell me what I mean. Once again, thank you for your receipt of this communication. And I am presenting it to this organization in the fashion for which Ms. Fennell has said is acceptable. I look forward to hearing back from you within a reasonable time since you are the custodian of records, the collective entity of the records. This would mean as keepers of the records, we shouldn't have to go back and forth like Aaliyah said that we've had, we should not have had the back and forth that we've had without there being any substantive information in a response specific to my request or do we need to have the Federal Court of Claims explain what obligational duties are placed upon the Federal Reserve as keepers of the record and how they are by law mandated to follow the Federal Reserve Act as written? And that's the end of the letter. Ladies and gentlemen, I will put this letter up on SATCOM. It'll be in the first folder, a legal understanding. It'll be under the first folder. So I will do that before this video is up because I'm tired, I tell you. But I'll put this up there so you guys can have a copy. If you want to use the information, the understanding, the point of reference to the Federal Reserve. A lot of people are talking about calling the Federal Reserve up and asking them questions. In my opinion, there is no better question for you to ask the Federal Reserve than what's stated here. Access to the funds that are supposed to be available under this act under this section of the Federal Reserve Act. And I put the complete record here, congressional record, presidential proclamation, the statute at large, the current statute at large, and the Federal Reserve Act in its current form. That's what I did. Okay? Whew. That was a whole lot, wasn't it? Did we take 13 minutes? I think about 13 minutes. What do y'all think? Hold on, get on out the way. See, that just be all up in my way. 19 minutes, I was five minutes off. That's because I did a lot of talking about nothing. All right, got to go. Y'all take care, okay? Don't y'all ever think that ain't nobody ever did nothing for y'all. Arriva Dirch.